Good morning. Today I'd like to talk about another integration technique. This one is called integration by parts and the premise is this. We want to do an integral and the thing that we're integrating is the product of a number of factors. We're going to group some of these factors together and call the result u. The rest of it, which includes this dx, which we pretend to be a factor, will be called dv. We are going to manipulate this by using the product rule backwards. So imagine that u and v are functions of x, and I want to differentiate the product of them. Using the product rule, the derivative of u times v is u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Then, in what seems like a pointless maneuver, we're going to integrate both sides of this. Now, on the one hand, this quantity is an integral. I'm looking for some function whose derivative is equal to that. I'm looking for a function whose derivative is the derivative of u times v. So obviously, u times v would work. If we use the same kind of abbreviations that we commonly do during substitution, then derivative of v with respect to x dx will be abbreviated as dv. We pretend these things are fractions in a way. Also, du dx with respect to x will just be written as du. So written in a rather odd format, u times v is equal to the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. If I subtract the integral of v du from both sides, I obtain this formula, which is often just called the integration by parts formula. The integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. Hopefully, if things go our way, this new integral will be easier to do than the other one, and we will actually be able to get our hands on v so that we can write this formula out, then do the easier integral. As an example, let's look at the integral of x cosine x dx. This is not one of our standard types. It can't be twisted around easily into one of them either. So I'm going to try this new idea, integration by parts. One philosophy is I would like things to get simpler instead of more complicated. If I pick the u to be cosine x, then the du will involve negative sine x, which at least isn't any worse than it was before. But the dv would be x dx. When you integrate a linear polynomial, you get quadratic, so that would be not so good. Instead, I'm going to let the u be x and the dv be the rest of it. If u is x, then the derivative of u with respect to x is 1. du would be 1 times dx using the usual notation. That is just dx. dv equal cosine x dx. Again, using the standard pretend that they're fractions thing, dv dx is cosine x. v must be an antiderivative of cosine x, one of which is sine x. 
we'll just figure out one antiderivative and then add the constant of integration in. uv minus integral v du turns into something that's not so bad. We know an antiderivative for the sine, so if I put that in and simplify, the integral of x cosine x dx should be x sine x plus cosine x plus a constant. Because this idea seems so strange, I'm going to check my answer by taking the derivative of it and making sure that I get x times cosine x like I'm supposed to. I have to use the product rule to differentiate x times sine x, but after doing all the work, the derivative of my alleged answer works out to be x times cosine x, just like it's supposed to. We know that the derivative of the natural log function is the 1 over function. But at this stage, we don't know an antiderivative for it. I don't know a function whose derivative is natural log x. Thinking of using integration by parts here, I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room. I'm going to take the u to be natural log x and the dv to be everything else. du is easy enough to figure out. Also v, writing down u times v, the natural log of x multiplied by the number x, which I'll just write that way, minus the integral of v du. v is x and du is 1 over x. This is the integral of 1 with respect to x, which is x. Allegedly, the derivative of x natural log x minus x plus a constant should be natural log of x. Again, using the product rule, this isn't very difficult to see. The derivative of x natural log x is the first function, x, times the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over x, plus the second function, natural log x, multiplied by the derivative of x, which is 1, minus derivative of x. After simplifying, we get natural log of x, just like we're supposed to. If we have the integral of x squared plus 5x plus 1 multiplied by e to the 2x, and I start thinking about how to carve that up. One of my factors is a quadratic polynomial. The derivative of that will be a first degree, which is easier to think about than quadratics. On the other hand, if I were to integrate e to the 2x, it would just be a constant multiple of e to the 2x. So that at least doesn't get any worse. I believe the best thing to do here would be to make the u equal to x squared plus 5x plus 1, and the dv the rest of it. For reasons that will become clear shortly, I'm going to leave things that came from the exponential grouped with the exponential, and so on. I'll simplify later. So right now, I have u times v minus the integral, literally, of v du. I still have an integral to do. I still have the integral of 1 half e to the 2x multiplied by 2x plus 5 with respect to x to do. I'm going to figure out that second integral separately, and I'm going to write it down inside this big box contained with brackets so that I don't miss any plus or minus signs up. 
working this integral out is not very difficult. I'll pick the u to be the polynomial factor again, and I am leaving it written in a very odd-looking form. 1 8 times 2 is 1 4 after all, but I don't want to write that down yet. We have our reasons for doing so. This minus sign came from our first application of integration by parts. Then inside these brackets, I had to do integration by parts again, which is always going to be two things multiplied together minus the integral of something else. That's where this minus sign came from. When we drop the brackets, you'll have the minus sign on the first piece and minus from the first integration by parts of minus the second part becomes plus. Then you can add a constant and then simplify your answer if you want to. What I really want to do right now is to remember my answer in this non-simplified format because there's a technique I can use called the tabular method in which I can integrate things like this very easily. I want to go back to the beginning of this. I've got something, the x squared plus 5x plus 1, where if I start taking derivatives of it, and then the derivative of that, and the derivative of that, after a while it becomes very simple. I have the other factor, e to the 2x. It's easy for me to integrate that over and over again. So I'll do this until I see a pattern here. The derivative of x squared plus 5x plus 1 is 2x plus 5. The derivative of that is the constant function 2. The derivative of that is 0. And all further derivatives are also 0. If I integrate e to the 2x, I'm going to get e to the 2x back again. Except because of the chain rule, I'll have a factor of 1 half also. The integral of 1 half e to the 2x is 1 fourth e to the 2x. The integral of that is 1 eighth e to the 2x. I'm going to imagine taking things in the first column and connecting them with downward sloping lines to the things in the second column that are one row down. I'll think of x squared plus 5x plus 1 being connected to 1 half e to the 2x, a 2x plus 5 connected to 1 fourth e to the 2x, 2 connected to 1 eighth e to the 2x, and then after that in the first column I have zeros. Look at this closely and compare it against our answers. x squared plus 5x plus 1 times 1 half e to the 2x x squared plus 5x plus 1 times 1 half e to the 2x. The first integration by parts introduced a minus sign. On the other hand, I've got 2x plus 5 times 1 fourth e to the 2x minus 2x plus 5 times 1 fourth e to the 2x And then if I multiply 1 8 e to the 2x and 2 together, plus minus plus 1 8 e to the 2x times 2, if I take this times that, that's the first term in my answer. If I take this times that, that's the second term except I have to subtract instead of add. The minus sign comes from the first integration by parts. 
if I take 2 and multiply it by 1 8 e to the 2x, I don't subtract that, I add it. So I have this alternating pattern of add, subtract, add. If I had more terms, I would subtract next and then add the product of these numbers with these numbers. And when I add them up, it's going to give me the answer I get by doing integration by parts twice without actually having to do all of this writing. As another simple example of this, let's look at the integral of x cubed e to the x. After a while, the derivatives of x cubed are all zero, and the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. So doing derivatives, I'll have x cubed to start with, 3x squared, 6x, 6, and 0 after that. Integrating e to the x gives me e to the x, and all successive integrals are e to the x. Connect with downward sloping lines. Put the plus, minus, plus, minus pattern on it. x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x minus 6e to the x plus a constant. In the terms that are not constants, well, the 6, I can factor an e to the x out. Allegedly, the derivative of this is x cubed e to the x. Doing the product rule, notice that there's an e to the x in both cases, so I can think of factoring that out. Minus 3x squared plus 3x squared cancels out. 6x plus negative 6x cancels out. Negative 6 plus 6 cancels out. And the only thing that remains is x cubed e to the x, just like it's supposed to be. This is the first one of at least two little videos I want to make on integration by parts. Coming up soon, other variations on the theme. Until then, I hope everybody has a good day. I'll talk to you again soon.